It's used as an example in this part is a two-screw rotary pump. As we watch a mechanic clean and inspect its components, keep in mind that the pump components you work with may be different. However, the basic principles that we'll cover will still apply. We'll start with the rotors. The mechanic will use a non-toxic, non-flammable solvent and a soft bristle brush. Even though the solvent is non-toxic and non-flammable, the mechanic is wearing safety goggles and rubber gloves. Even non-toxic solvents can irritate skin and eye tissues. Make sure that you wear the appropriate protective equipment whenever you use solvents. The mechanic uses the brush and solvent to get the rotors as clean as possible and free of foreign matter such as dirt, grease, or oil that could make it difficult to inspect the rotors. As he finishes with each rotor, he sets it on a clean, lint-free cloth. The next step is to inspect the rotors. The inspections are made with the rotors suspended one at a time on V-blocks. The mechanic has set up V-blocks that are the proper height and sturdy enough to support one of the rotors. With the rotor mounted on the V-blocks, the mechanic looks it over carefully to see if there are any visible imperfections. At the same time, he feels the rotor's surface to check for wear or damage that might not be visible. He rotates the rotor until he is satisfied that he has inspected all of its surfaces. Minor blemishes can be removed with a non-abrasive cleaning pad. If the mechanic had found any chips, cracks, or worn edges, he would have reported them to a supervisor. After using the cleaning pad, he cleans the rotor with solvent to rinse off any particles of the cleaning pad that may have remained on the rotors. Inspecting a rotor involves more than just a surface inspection. The mechanic also has to check each rotor to make sure that it is not bent or out of round. These checks can be made at several points along the length of the rotor using a dial indicator. To check each rotor, a dial indicator is mounted so that its stem presses slightly against the surface of the rotor. After setting the dial indicator to zero, the mechanic rotates the rotor as he watches the face of the dial. If the pointer moves slowly away from zero and then back again, the rotor might have to be replaced depending on the rotor's specifications. If the pointer flickers very quickly at any point, there could be a burr or a dent at that location. Small burrs or dents can be removed without having to replace the shaft. In our example, the mechanic finds no problems with the rotors, so he moves on to clean and inspect the mechanical seals. After he finishes cleaning the seals, he will inspect each one for signs of pitting, etching, or other surface damage. Then he cleans the bearings that he removed from the timing gear housing. He'll also clean the bearings that remain in the inboard and outboard bearing brackets. When he's finished cleaning the bearings, he'll inspect them to make sure that they are free of foreign material and that they're not chipped, worn, or otherwise damaged. Any imperfections in the seals or the bearings would be reported. When he finishes cleaning and inspecting the seals and the bearings, the mechanic cleans and checks the other pump components that he removed. If he finds any worn or damaged components, he will set them aside and request replacements. After the mechanic finishes cleaning and inspecting the other pump components, he uses a cloth that has been soaked in solvent to clean the inside surface of the bore. The bore is the precisely machined chamber in which the rotors turn during operation. Then the mechanic uses a dry, lint-free cloth to dry the bore. This also removes any traces of oil or dirt that might have been missed during cleaning. Once the bore is clean and dry, it should be inspected for damage. For example, there could be scoring, gouges, or other marks on the bore's inside surface. Bore damage can result when the timing gears or the bearings fail. Also, dirt or abrasives in the fluid being pumped can result in scoring and other forms of damage. In addition, the rotors could bang together during operation and damage both themselves and the bore. If the mechanic had found any imperfections in the bore, he would have reported them to a supervisor. 
The mechanic also checks the pump's suction and discharge flanges for pitting, erosion, and other signs of wear. And he checks all of the pump's internal passages for signs of plugging. Next, the mechanic loosens and removes the flange bolts from the pump. The mechanic then checks the flange bolts to make sure that their threads do not show signs of damage or abnormal wear. Next, he dresses the flanges and the casing ends with a lubricated stone. This is done to remove blemishes and form a smooth, even surface that will allow a proper seal. As the mechanic stones the suction and discharge flanges and the two ends of the casing, he is careful to remove no more material than is absolutely necessary. This completes the cleaning and inspection of the pump components. Now try a question to check your understanding of what we've covered in this part. The mechanic also checks the pump's suction and discharge flanges for pitting, erosion, and other signs of wear. And he checks all of the pump's internal passages for signs of plugging. Next, the mechanic loosens and removes the flange bolts from the pump. The mechanic then checks the flange bolts to make sure that their threads do not show signs of damage or abnormal wear. Next, he dresses the flanges and the casing ends with a lubricated stone. This is done to remove blemishes and form a smooth, even surface that will allow a proper seal. As the mechanic stones the suction and discharge flanges and the two ends of the casing, he is careful to remove no more material than is absolutely necessary. This completes the cleaning and inspection of the pump components.